Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of The Big Four by Agatha Christie. So as always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and I'll give you my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, painful persuasion. In that East End cellar, I was convinced that these were my last moments. I braced myself for the shock of black rushing waters. To my surprise, a low laugh fell on my ears. You are a brave man, said the man on the divan. We of the East appreciate bravery. Death for yourself you are faced. Will you face death for another? Sweat broke out on my brow. The pen is ready for your hand. The man smiled. You have only to write, if not. If not, I echoed bleakly. If not, the lady you love dies and dies slowly. My master amuses himself in his spare hours by devising new and ingenious methods of torture. That's not really a blurb. In fact, there's a better blurb here, which is just another quote, but. Li Chang Yen is the controlling force. I have designated him, therefore, as number one. Number two is represented by an S with two lines to it, the sign of a dollar, also two stripes and a star. Number three is a woman, her nationality French. Number four, the voice faltered and broke. Some overmastering terror seemed to be gaining the day. The features were distorted and twisted. Four ruthless criminals seek world domination. Between them, between them and their goal stands one man, the inimitable Hercule Poirot. So we start with chapter one, the unexpected guest. So this is the point at which Hastings and Poirot meet each other again after a period apart. And there's some unfortunate word choices going on. Um, and rushing forward, he enveloped me in a capacious embrace. Our conversation was incoherent and inconsequent. Ejaculations, eager questions, incomplete answers, messages from my wife, explanations as to my journey were all jumbled up together. You can't go ejaculate in one minute and then think about your wife the next. And then uh, a man shows up and they have to, they have to summon a doctor and uh, we go, hmm, said Dr. Ridgway when he had finished. Curious case. Brain fever, I suggested. The doctor immediately snorted with contempt. Brain fever? Brain fever? No such thing as brain fever. An invention of novelists. No, the man's had a shock of some kind. He's come here under the force of a persistent idea to find Monsieur Hercule Poirot, 14 Faraway Street. And he repeats those words mechanically without in the least knowing what they mean. And a man uh, escapes from a lunatic asylum and Poirot says it never occurred to anybody that he might be sane. The keeper permitted himself to laugh. If he was sane, what would he be doing in a lunatic asylum? And Poirot uses, uses the expression sacre mille tonnerre, which means holy thousand thunders. And a man uh, escapes from a lunatic asylum and Poirot says it never occurred to anybody that he might be sane. The keeper permitted himself to laugh. If he was sane, what would he be doing in a lunatic asylum? They all say they're sane, you know. And somebody leaves a sign on the clock, but it's not the stereotypical, you know, trying to frame uh, the murder as happening at a certain time by setting the hands of the clock to that. Uh, it's set to the number four, and it said maybe it's a reference to uh, number four of the big four. What is that? That's a little bit of tape. It's bothering me, so I'm gonna take that off. We get a character who's evidently from Yorkshire, because he goes, there beats bungalow. Do you want to do you want to see the inspector? Haven't you heard about the murder then? Shocking business twas seemingly. Pulls the blood they do say. That was my best Yorkshire accent. Then a, mur a murder happens and we get this is a man's work, not a woman's. I mean it could be a woman. You don't know that. And uh, we get this little bit about Poirot, which is also it's a clue for later on as well. But I think uh, it's quite an interesting just thing that he does. Uh, suddenly, he uttered an excited yelp reminiscent of a Pomeranian dog. I rushed to join him. He was standing in the larder in a dramatic attitude. In his hand, he was brandishing a leg of mutton. Exclamation mark at the end of that sentence and everything. Uh, we get this bit Poirot saying, Madam, myself, I do not of necessity accept the view of the police. With them, it is always cherchez la femme. Yet it is clear that something occurred that night towards your husband's plans. Uh, cherchez la femme means look for the woman. Those French Duolingo lessons are paying off. And we get this where Poirot and Hastings almost almost kick the bucket. <laughs> and Poirot says, It was a near thing, that, but clumsy all the same, for I had no suspicion, at least hardly any suspicion. Yes, but for my quick eyes, the eyes of a cat, Hercule Poirot might now be crushed out of existence, a terrible calamity for the world. And you too, mon ami, though that would not be such a national catastrophe. And then there are two bits on this page I wanted to talk about. So... Poirot plans to trick people by pretending to get on the train back to London and then getting off it. And um, so we get, do you mean we are to slip off again at the last minute? No, Hastings. Isn't his name Hastings? Yeah, there's a typo there. It should be no Hastings. 
Our enemies will be satisfied with nothing less than a bona fide departure. But the train doesn't stop until Calais. It will stop if it is paid to do so. Oh, come now, Poirot. Surely you can't pay an express to stop. They'd refuse. My dear friend, have you never remarked the little handle? The signal, the signal d'arrêt. Penalty for improper use, 100 francs, I think. Oh, you're going to pull that. Or rather, a friend of mine, Pierre Combeau, will do so. Then, while he is arguing with the guard, and making a big scene, and all the train is agog with interest, you and I will fade quietly away. We duly carried out Poirot's plan. And then this is a bit I like here. Pierre Combo, an old crony of Poirot's, and who evidently knew my little friend's methods pretty well, fell in with the arrangements. The communication cord was pulled just as we got to the outskirts of Paris. Combo made a scene in the most approved French fashion, and Poirot and I were able to leave the train without anyone being interested in our departure. I think that's very clever. Uh, almost a little bit of like uh, social engineering there, like how hackers used to get into companies' databases and stuff. We have uh, Poirot trying to use an English saying, an English aphorism. He says, have no illusions, Hastings. The boot is not upon the right leg. Is that how you say it? No, Hercule, it is not how you say it. But good attempt, nonetheless. Uh, Jap, Inspector Jap, he goes, uh, you know what artists are too. No morals at all. We have a very racist depiction of a Chinaman, Ah Ling. He says, I well, he sorry. He good master. And then Poirot says, you know who kill him? And the Chinese man says, I not know. I tell policeman if I know. But it is a book of that era. We have a, a chess game, plays a major part, a role in the plot, which I thought was interesting because uh, I've not long uh, watched um, The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. And so, and I kind of have always found chess a little interesting. Like I've read Gary Kasparov's book and they talk in this about, uh, it's like a chess game between a Soviet and an American, which obviously did happen. So you can see where Christie got some of her inspiration from. Not with um, Beth from The Queen's Gambit though, that didn't happen. But uh, Bobby Fischer did play the Soviets and win. Here we have somebody saying, um, Dr. Savoronov was a distinct personality. I noted the peculiar formation of his head, its unusual height. A great chess player must have a great brain, I knew. I could easily understand Dr. Savoronov being the second greatest player in the world. And, uh, I mean, Einstein had a smaller than average brain, so, you know. Let me get a reference to a heathen Chinaman. And then we get this little bit here. Mademoiselle blooms like a flower in this dry as dust old office, he added, careless of the feelings of Mr. McNeil. The outrageous flattery was not without effect. Miss Monroe blushed and simpered. Oh, go on now, Mr. Poirot, she exclaimed. I know what you Frenchmen are like. Mademoiselle, we are not mute like Englishmen before beauty. Not that I'm a Frenchman. I'm a Belgian, you see. And then, later on... <laughs> I don't mind telling you, Monsieur Poirot, we're, you're a gentleman. You know how to order a lunch for a lady, which is more than some of these young whippersnappers do nowadays. Downright mean, I call it. As I was saying, you being a Frenchman won't be shocked. Ah, you Frenchman. Naughty, naughty. He's Belgian. But that's like the recurring joke and it really kind of winds him up, I guess. And then Poirot tells Hastings, I always tell you that the English know no geography. And then we get this big confrontation at the end where Poirot... Okay, spoiler alert, major spoiler territory. Poirot dies, comes back from the dead, and then they get captured. And then they're like, oh, he's not Poirot. He's T Poirot's twin brother. And then it turns out, no, it is Poirot. So yeah, the big four, Agatha Christie, I enjoyed it. Probably gave it a four out of five. It was a bit over the top in some places, but I could kind of look over that. As I was reading it, I was thinking this would be quite a good one um, for new Christie readers, but then because of the fact that <laughs> that Poirot dies in it, maybe not so much, um, but it is pretty, actually it's not really that typical of her work, I think it's even bigger in scope than quite a lot of it, I like this uh, having four different bad guys as well, I think an ensemble cast movie of it could be made that would be really cool, but yeah, overall enjoyed it, gave it a 4 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Big Four by Agatha Christie, as always don't forget to let me know what you thought of this book in the comments, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video, thanks a lot, Bye bye